Eight. Okay. Can I give you 19? Yes, 11. 11. Okay. Well, that, yeah. How about that? Thank you. He is a student of ours. Okay. His name is Jorge Guerrero. He's the 10th out of 19. This woman had 19 babies. Now, what's going to happen to her? I don't know if they're going to expect her to have kids, but the family's going to do some economics there, okay? You go, you don't go, you go, you go, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you go, you go, you don't. So, everything, all the problems of the world are in this family, but also all the hope, right, because they're human beings with a treasure, potential inside. These human beings, they're not objects. They're full of hope, of light, of strength, of vision, of poetry, of capacity to transform whatever they are. How do we ignite that? That is our role because we get to come to Pacific. So when I went back from after graduating from here, then I went to George Washington University and got a master's, but I went back to Paraguay and I started a microfinance program. The idea is that you can, he is an undocumented farmer who has no access to the banking sector and the theory of microfinance, if you can only give him a $500 loan with which he can buy a couple of oxen, you know, he's 10 times better than before and he can, um, and he can increase his family income, strengthen his precarious job and create new jobs, okay? This is another student of ours. Maricel, 18 years old. Look at her house. And her father, who's half blind, um, makes income up, because he's a farmer, but also a shoemaker, and makes a little bit of money, but they have so many siblings, all of them, they're not there anymore, that, uh, you know, he's, they're really living below the less than one dollar, less than two dollars a day, okay? This is how they live. Imagine when it rains. Okay? Can you imagine having gone to this school? I saw the movie Waiting for Superman last night. Has anybody heard of that movie? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. But this is our, I mean, Superman doesn't even fly over where I come from. <laughs> okay. So. Is this the future of all the poor girls? What can we do to alter this pathetic future? Okay? She washes her clothes. I mean, let's say out of 18 hours a day, how many hours a day does she spend washing clothes? How many do, uh, hours a day does she spend fetching water from this same contaminated stream? Right? And then firewood? And then cooking, and then it's time to have babies. And the next, it's, it's literally like that. So this is a chronic un unemployment. So my question to you is, what is poverty? Give me a quick answer. Such as? Shelter. 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 What else? Education. Education. Food. Okay. Health. Sanitation. Oh, my. Something else? Hygiene. Hygiene. Education. Education. Future. A future. A future. A future. We're talking about tangible stuff. Or not? Oh, so you think that poverty is not only 
only stuff that you can buy. Because she said money. Right? If you have money, what do you do with your money? You buy education, and you buy food, and you, huh? So from her standpoint, I'm not saying you said that, I'm just pretending. <laughs> she says money is a solution. Okay? And then when we got all over there, you said future. Future. Money and future. Do you agree with him? Okay. We developed, we compiled 50 indicators, because we have been working in poverty for many, many years, and it just doesn't gel. It doesn't gel. It doesn't make sense. We're knocking our head against the wall, and the United States has been a failure. So has Germany. So has Brazil. So has South Africa. Everybody is failing. So there's hardcore poverty. You know the pyramid, right? Six billion people in the world. How many living at the bottom of the pyramid? A lot. Big time a lot, right? <coughs> and this is an intractable business problem. It's an intractable social problem, and because it is potentially unstable, it becomes a political. Okay? That's why all of us are all of us have interest in it. We may be inclusive, very, very uh, insensitive, but we're interested. Why do Central Americans and Mexicans come to the United States? Exposing themselves to the worst risk in the world. I mean, more people die here than in Palestine. Why do they come? To improve their situation. So, and it rocks the boat, right? Can we put a tall wall, a high wall? Let's. How high? So we said, and then let's see if you and I agree on the 50 poverty indicators. You said income and employment. You said health and environment. Housing and infrastructure. Education and culture. Organization and participation. And he said, what about self-awareness and self-esteem? Is that an indicator? She who does not respect herself Right? Or she who is severely depressed and low income. What are the chances of her of improving her income situation? If she is depressed, very low. So depression all of a sudden is a issue as important as income. And what about awareness of her own needs? Right? What's the capacity here of students? They have goals, right? Huh? Can you imagine if you are a person without goals? Okay. So, we think that a way to approach this problem, these 50 poverty indicators, is to look at four elements of an inter this would be an integral approach, right? Two are external to the person, and two are internal. What's external to the person? Her behavior? in the system where she lives. And what's internal to the person? Her intention and her culture. Okay? So, why doesn't she have any teeth? No teeth. No dental care. No dental care. So it's a, her, she does not go to the dentist. She does not care for her teeth, nor she does not, nor does she go to the dentist. Behavior. Is that it? <coughs> okay, but it's something that she's not eating right. It's her behavior. Lack of knowledge about how to take care or knowing about Okay, so we can give her that. The dentist is not available. She wants to get her teeth fixed, but no dentist to go to. So, it's not a matter of changing her behavior or altering her behavior. It's about... Changing the system. Okay? So there's a group of us in universities all over the world, and we, what do we want to do with the system? We want to 
to destroy it. Right? And if we destroy the system, she will have teeth? <laughs> Maybe, right? We're going to set up dental, uh, den uh, dental clinics everywhere, right? But what it may happen? What happens with Mike when Michael Dell goes to an African village and he said, it's so simple. If each of these kids had one laptop per child, they would be able to. So I'm just going to change the system. I'm going to create a, a computer lab in every village. Have we heard that? <laughs> and it, that's changing the system, right? And what happens when people don't go to the, to the clinic, to the computer lab? Because she, her, she may not value it, right? In her village, where, where, where you're 50 and you have 18, that's, that's cool. <laughs> and what's the ultimate reason why she doesn't have any teeth? Why did you not like to go to the dentist when you were <laughs> seven? Is it that? Is it that? <laughs> Thank you.